Hey everybody, I'm back to do a follow-up video I did on the X-T8 laser's cutting ability. Um, I did a video about three or four weeks ago and kind of went through all these materials uh, to see how, you know, how fast and how deep it, this laser will cut. And I put it out there and I got an email back from Opt and said, damn, nice video, but we think that laser should have done a lot better than that. So. They wanted to send me a new one. Um, I had a pre-production version, so it was it was one of the first batches that were made. Still had some 3D printed parts on it and stuff. And they had said they made a couple of improvements. And I had noticed that one of the diodes wasn't aligned quite as well, so they probably didn't have the manufacturing process all exactly dialed in on that one but anyway they sent me this brand new one um, this has all metal parts now no more 3d printed stuff um, and the other thing I realized when I was doing the deep cutting is I never spent the time to really characterize well what is the the best way the uh, to set the focal height for cutting deep materials that you can't cut in one pass. So I did a whole separate video on that and I'll link to that down below. I put that out about a week ago or so. And so I just wanted to follow up. I actually am going to delete the old video I did because the cut numbers just aren't valid for this laser. They're much better than that. So this is just a really short laser or video on, this, on the results for this laser. Um, I already covered in the other video all the techniques I did to characterize get to get the best focal height, but I just wanted to republish a, a correct video with the right table and everything um, to just because, like I said, the other one was pretty much invalid. This this laser really will cut um, five to ten inches per minute faster than what I had gotten on that on the thinner materials, and then I actually was able to cut some thicker materials with the production version that I couldn't even get through uh, on the other one. So uh, just a quickie, I'm gonna go over the table and all the materials and stuff here in a sec, um, but it's it's um, just a, a quick follow-up. And I do encourage you to go read, uh, watch the other video that I'll link because that one's uh, useful for any laser uh, as far as getting the right focal depth for uh, thick materials and that number is going to be different for every laser I think with different lenses and things like that So you kind of want to do that characterization to get your optimized cutting capabilities All right, leave any comments down below uh, Appreciate you watching. Thank you So here's the pile of my cut materials uh, I just did a ton of different things I had in the shop here everything from leather uh, to solid hardwoods to some various different plywoods even tried some foam and some cardboard and some plastic materials so I kind of covered everything from oh uh, 64 thousandths of an inch or like a millimeter and a half up to almost an inch thick and um, this Palwania wood here was the thickest material I cut through um, it was like 0.9 inches or that's what that 24 millimeters about so this laser is extremely capable. Um, some of these lines you see here were the results of my uh, depth characterization. And again, check out the other video for exactly what that, that's all about. But I um, have redone all my cut tests on all of this stuff, redid the uh, results tables. And so I'm gonna go over that quick now, um, just so you can see it, because I really wanna publish the right results for this laser. I believe this is more, this is much more representative of what you can do with this laser. So all of my cutting methodology was to use a file that was progressively going from five inches per minute and 127 millimeters per minute um, up to 45 millimeters per minute or inches per minute, um, which is 1148 millimeters per minute. Um, sometimes I did, I have files for one pass, two passes, and three passes. So sometimes it repeats, it'll cut. Uh, when I do deeper materials, I'll be running around the square two or three times as well. But um, this is my gauge for, for testing the success. So if I can push this out easily, or if it just falls out, um, 
that's the highest number I record as, as successful cuts. And you can see on the backs of these where the next one up would cut through on one axis, um, but not the other. And that's pretty typical for diode lasers. The beams aren't perfectly symmetrical, so they're a little bit hotter in one direction than the other. So this is kind of what it looks like once you go just a little bit faster, it can't quite make it through. So let's take a look at the cutting table here. So on the left is all the different materials I tried. Um, then their thicknesses, both in inches and millimeters. How many passes that I used. Now sometimes this is, um, in one case here I did MDF in one or two passes. It actually, this particular thickness of MDF cut pretty well either way. But most time um, there's an optimum number of passes where you know you could cut it a little bit slower and or maybe half the speed in one pass or you could speed up the feed rate and cut it in two passes and you actually get a better result with two passes because as i explained in the characterization video there becomes a point where running slower just causes uh, more charred burning and in some cases literally fires in the wood so there's kind of a, a happy point uh, above at around 15 inches per minute um, or th that's around 381 millimeters per minute where you want to kind of stay above that for organic materials like wood and leather and things otherwise below that speed even like I said it'll cut through it gets it's not a good clean cut so um, that's where you start to get into these thicker materials like a half inch or thicker you, you'll start to kind of optimize your speed to stay in that 15 to 25 inches per minute range and have the number of passes adjusted for that so that's why you see progressively as I go from one to three passes here as, as it gets thicker and thicker so uh, power wise I always do cutting at a hundred percent because uh, the op lasers aren't Chinese lasers so you don't have to worry about running them at a hundred percent and just uh, trashing the lifetime like most of the Chinese lasers do um, and that's also by the way something that's kind of a characteristic of co2 lasers too is generally people don't run over 70 or 80 percent because it's really hard in the lifetime of the tube um, but if a good a good diode laser like this um, you don't really have that fear because they're designed to uh, not be overdriving the diode and they have good cooling and everything so they can actually withstand lots of use at 100 percent power uh, and then, then here's the speed um, that, that this is what this is is the fastest speed that i could cut through and still push the test squares out so uh, basically i ran uh, squares uh, they were about a half inch on a side um, and I progressively ran faster and faster with these and so um, you know if it cuts through and I can push it out with li a little bit of pressure then I call that a successful cut if I had to really force it or if I'm pushing it out like tore out some of the fibers and stuff in the wood I didn't count that because to me if it's if it's not ready to just about fall out on its own then you didn't really cut through so that that's my criteria for um, what what the speed is it represents that fastest success speed so um, and I have a few comments on here so when I like for example when I did the leather uh, I didn't have any more leather so I didn't have any more uh, to throw on there and, and try to run faster um, so this probably would cut a little faster than 45. Um, and the only material on here that I really didn't consider successful, this is black plastic. It's kind of a dark black packing foam. 
It's actually the stuff that the laser came in. Um, it's not that you can't cut through. It's that when it when it's cut, it melts and spreads out so fast that it's a pretty ugly cut. And that's not the laser's fault. It's just I thought I'd try it just to see how it cut. But this particular phone, really, I wouldn't um, I wouldn't try to cut something. This was almost this was three quarters of an inch. It would it cuts through the first quarter inch just fine, but the beam spreads out enough that uh, the thicker the thicker depths down towards the bottom of the foam just it kind of melts into a big blob. So not really a good material to cut with this at that at that thickness. But uh, the rest of it's just excellent. I mean, like this black ABS is a sixteenth of an inch thick. Um, 80 inches per minute that's a very fast cut rate for for a diode laser now these to me these some of these things are getting up to the speed where for example like the corporate corrugated cardboard i wouldn't be able to cut that cleanly on a router any faster than that probably so you know 240 inches per minute is really fast uh so like for for people wanting to use this later sort of for like production like cutting out custom shipping containers or boxes that's just a phenomenal speed um what i really like is you know start to get into like the the eighth inch mdf the quarter inch mdf you know you can see in one pass i can cut quarter inch mdf at 20 inches per minute or 500 millimeters per minute that's uh that's really fast and it just it cuts it in one pass it's just an excellent cut so if you want to make signs with like raised letters out of MDF, I do that once in a while. Um, it's it's just uh, phenomenal to me that you can cut this this well. Um, and then once you get down in to these thicker thicknesses in the bottom half of the table, like the half inch to three quarters inch wood, those were just not really achievable at all with the previous laser. So I'm coming from, I had a 15 watt opt and uh for a short time i had a 30 watt opt they did um the 30 watt would cut a lot faster but it didn't have the the longer focal length of this laser's lens so the combination of 45 watts plus the longer focal length really helps out these um thicker materials down here so uh you know two passes on these materials here baltic birch plywood and walnut uh, this is fantastic at 20 inches per minute cuts them very cleanly um so you know it kind of it really brings some new capabilities where i used to use the router on these but of course this, the spindle gives you round corners so you know if you use an eighth inch bit um you still have a sixteenth of an inch radius on those corners you can't make perfectly square corners whereas with the laser being seven thousandths of an inch um diameter you know you they look like perfectly square corners to the to the eye um, and then i even was able to cut some of the 0 0.7 0 0.75 inch thick uh plywoods here and three passes for 13 ply plywood that's um that's kind of amazing to me i did not expect to be able to do that and then even this polwania this is a really soft wood but this is super thick i mean it's almost an inch thick and three passes that cut that pretty well too um, at 25 this is one of those woods where I actually got it up to 25 inches per minute and did three passes versus say two passes at 15 or 20 because the wood really had a tendency to burn I'll show some pictures of that but um, again this is where the three passes at a higher speed versus two passes at a little bit lower speed uh, the overall cut time was about the same but the quality was much better. So again, um, aiming for a combination of speed and quality here. Um, so that's that's it. This is the uh, updated um, table. This is like I was actually happy with the previous results from the uh, pre-production laser, but the production ones are significantly better. Again, partially because of the laser. I think um, some of these numbers up here were the where I was using a focal point set on the top of the material, that's how I cut anything under a quarter inch. But then when I went to uh, pass a quarter inch thick, I did some characterization to find where the optimum 
depth was, and that it turned out to be about five millimeters or 200 thousandths of an inch below the focal point being on the surface. And I found that through characterization. And again, I'll put a link for the video and how, how all that should be done <clears throat> down below in the uh, deep description section. But everything from 250 thousandths here or six millimeters and up, that's all focal point on the surface of the material and everything that's thicker than that I had that lowered down by 200 thousandths um, so again very happy with this uh, this really brings into brings a lot more materials into the possibility of using a laser instead of just a spindle so um, I'm going to be doing a couple of videos in the future and some double sided cutting with this on even thicker materials so that should be interesting to see how that works out all right, if you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments. Thanks.